The O'Briens, Charlie and Jan, get together for supper with friends and family whenever they can. There's someone new at the table, another Charlie, son of daughter Ellen and her husband Justin. But it doesn't take much to remind the O'Briens that someone is missing too. Their eldest son Stephen disappeared 25 years ago this March. Time has helped to dampen the sense of desperation and grief they felt when Stephen first went missing. But his absence is never forgotten. I feel uh, the pain that we felt. For me, it was just like yesterday. It's like uh, 93 happened. <laughs> And then I wake up in 2018, it's like 25 years ago. And I think, where did the time go? And still feeling uh, a lot of the pain. It's, um, it's, it's hard. And Jan and Charlie say even now, they fight not to be overly protective of their other children, Mitchell, Ellen, and Emily. You, you know, you go through your life and if, you're, if, you, if they're not where they're supposed to be of their not on time, or and it's been hard on them to. Uh, it, it's just to have that same gut feeling that can't, you know was in our well, still in our guts, but not, even more so, of course, at that time during all that whole incident. And you just don't want that to ever. It's just such a bad feeling that you know, you know it's, it's it's hard on everybody. It's, and it's been hard too for Stephen's friends missing a special person they grew up with. He was very creative, very, very funny, a bit of a chip on his shoulder at times, um, smart, Stephen was very smart. He was adventurous. Rachel Cantalo Patton first met Stephen in grade one. Mm, he seemed like a little punk. <laughs> <laughs> in what way? Um, he wasn't a bit shy, and he'd like to play little pranks and stuff. Later in high school, they became a couple. He seemed a lot sweeter and kinder, and he really enjoyed nature, and he'd bring me flowers that he'd pick and candies and stuff, and he was just more sweet. Even early on, Stephen showed an interest in baking, something that eventually took him to the culinary arts program at Holland College. I found him one time. Uh, he had snuck into the kitchen and grabbed the flour and the eggs, and he hid behind a couch. And when I came along, to, <laughs> where he had the bowl and the mixer there, and I said, what are you doing? He said, I wanted to surprise you. I wanted to make some pancakes. <laughs> yeah, he always said he wanted to open a, a bakery in Iona. <laughs> wow. He was really ahead of his time in some ways because he was, um, he was both very masculine and yet at the same time not afraid to be creative and not afraid to think outside the box, kind of. Stephen had friends, a loving family, and he was doing exactly what he wanted to do. But on a cold night in March, 25 years ago, something happened that took Stephen away from all of this. It was March 20th, 1993. Stephen was in the first year of a two-year course at the Culinary Institute at Holland College. He had helped serve and clean up at a dinner with other students. It was at the end of March break, with many of his closest friends away, so he ended up drinking alone at a couple of bars in downtown Charlottetown. Just after 1 a.m., he walked out of what was then called Pat's Rose and Gray Room on Richmond. Someone saw him walking up to Queen Street. Some say he had a coat on. Others say he didn't. He turned left on Queen, and Stephen O'Brien has never been seen or heard from again. And that is unusual that someone could disappear in the middle of the winter in Charlottetown and with a small area that and no sign of him anywhere. By Sunday night, Stephen Friends knew something was wrong. 
There were desperate searches by friends and family. The Charlottetown police started an investigation. There was help from lost children's networks nationally, public pleas. But the disappearance of Stephen O'Brien remains a mystery. I live downtown. <laughs> Not that much has changed. Somebody, somebody saw something. Someone knows something. I, uh, I would say if you know something, let us know. Reach out to us. Reach out to the police. Um, let us know. Yeah. We need answers. Just uh, anything, anything, anything at all. I mean, just anything would, would help. Like I say, bring that closure. And that's you know whether it's yeah. whether it's good news or bad news or whatever. It's just what anything. There is something now that the O'Briens can count on. Clancy McLeod called Jan and said. It's been 25 years. Let's celebrate and remember Stephen. There were people that loved him and still love him, his family, his parents, um, so many of his friends, and that, um, that he mattered, that his life mattered. I really appreciated her approaching me with it, um, her idea. You know, I think we're in some part of this whole process, it's, it's been helpful. It's, it's good for us to be able to talk about Steve and, and what he, his interests were and his goals and uh, to come together um, as a family and, and work on, on something like this. It's been helpful. If you want to say it's, it's helpful as far as the uh, healing process. It's not, you know, we've never really had closure, so that's it's some help toward that i guess if there ever will be that's the thing now after 25 years stephen's family and friends want to make sure he is remembered by creating a bursary in stephen's name at the culinary arts program at holland college when something bad happens you have to look for the good in it and hopefully this is the good that can come out of this that uh we can help uh, another young individual. The O'Briens and their friends have lived with so many unanswered questions about what happened to Stephen that March night 25 years ago. A bursary in his name, getting together to share memories this summer, won't provide answers, but his friends and family will ensure that he's not forgotten, that Stephen O'Brien's life mattered.